Hi, and welcome pre-AP chemistry kids from Allen High School. We're talking about formula stoichiometry, and right now we're moving into empirical formulas and molecular formulas. Our real goal is to find the molecular formula of substance. So I can have a substance that has elements A, B, and C, and subscripts X, Y, and Z, and X to Y to Z is a mole ratio. Now, to find this, in typically, not anymore with newer equipment, but in terms of learning problem solving and concepts, we're going to use two experiments. One experiment would be to find the molar mass. Now, that's going to be given. And the next experiment is to find the empirical or experimentally determined formula. Whoops, I didn't spell that. Empirical formula. Okay? Now, um, that's our focus. So if we want a mole ratio, we first or somehow we've got to get to moles. And if we want a ratio, we have to divide. And mm -hmm. since these numbers can never be less than one, what we're going to do is we're going to divide by the smallest. And by dividing by the smallest, we'll have one to numbers greater than one, right? Now, what can happen is that you can end up when we do these with <clears throat> at fractions. And X, Y, and Z has to be, have to be a whole number ratio. So we're going to have to find a way to get those two whole numbers. So that will be our ultimate goal. And then we can add a second step to get that actual molecular formula. Now, this will be either done at home or in class, depending on timing. Uh, but let's, let's look at the sequence. And you want to memorize this. If, if I was a little better at this, or maybe I need to uh, enlist some help from some students, they could write a song. Percent to mass, mass to moles. Divide by the smallest, multiply till whole. You want to learn to say that many times. That's a brain dump list so that you have a checklist for problem solving. Percent to mass, mass to moles. Divide by the smallest, multiply till whole. All right. Now, to go percent to mass is going to be really easy because percent composition is intensive. And intensive properties are independent on your starting amount. So we're just going to assume 100 grams because it's very easy to take a percentage of 100 grams. You can choose whatever you want. Some people actually like to choose one gram and that works. Uh, but we don't want to choose anything random because then we're adding extra algebra we don't need. So percent to mass, assume 100 grams. Mass to moles, use molar mass. Now, when we do this, you want to carry at least four digits. This isn't as much about significant figures because the final answer is a formula, not a value. But if you round too much, it's going to totally mislead you on the next two steps. So carry through at least four values in your numbers, all right? Then we're going to divide by the smallest. I mentioned that. And we need to multiply to get whole numbers. Not always, okay? You will always do this step. You will always do this step. And you will sometimes do the first and sometimes do the last, all right? Now to multiply till whole, if this is, if you end up with anything 0 0.2, 2.2, 5.2, 20.2, 2, doesn't matter, or 0 0.8, which is 4 fifths, you're going to multiply by 5. And you multiply all of the mole ratio values by five. Not just the one that needs it, but all of the mole, mole ratio values. If you end up with a quarter or three quarters, like 1.25, 0 0.25, whatever, we're gonna multiply by four. If it's a third or two thirds, we'll multiply by three. And that number can be anything in front. And if it's a half, we multiply by two. All right, so now let's have at it. I like to set these up somewhat in a spreadsheet form. I think it helps you track your work a little better. So I've got zinc, 
nitrogen, and oxygen. Now, it says that it gives us our percent composition, and you know by the, the law of constant composition that that won't change depending on amount, so we're going to assume 100 grams. If I assume 100 grams, 34.39% of 100 is 34.39 grams. Love that algebra step. Now, if the problem hadn't given me my oxygen, I could have calculated it because the sum of all of the percents and hence the masses had to be equal to 100. The problem was nice enough to give it to me, so I've got 50.79 grams. So we've done our first step. You have a point in your partial credit. Percent to mass, simply do 100 grams. All you have to do is drop the percent sign and put a gram sign, but you have to do it. You have to show me that. All right, percent to mass, mass to moles. Mass to moles, we will use molar mass. Uh, so for zinc, it's one mole of zinc. Now, I, I'm not as picky about labeling right now because I have zinc right out front to help me remember what I'm working with. Now, caution, caution, caution. All right, it, you're going to maybe want to think of this as diatomic, but this is zinc in a substance. I've got some amount of zinc, I've got some amount of nitrogen, and some amount of oxygen. I don't have pure nitrogen. I don't have pure oxygen. So we have to use their atomic molar mass. So I've got 14.01 grams. Don't round. If you do too much rounding, it can really throw you off later. So assuming I did my algebra right, which I mess up every once in a while, you got to be keeping a close eye on that. And I get 1.0578. Notice I'm keeping at least four values at this point and 3.17 formals. So now you have two points, percent to mass, mass to moles. Now these were actual moles in 100 grams. I don't want actual moles in 100 grams. I want moles as a ratio. So my next step is going to be to divide by the smallest. So let's take a look. Um, okay, that's my smallest value. I'm not going to just divide this one by the smallest value. I'm going to divide all of them. So at this point, what you do to one, you do to all. All for one and one for all. We're a team. Now, what that is going to do is give us a ratio. So this is now a ratio of moles, and the smallest value will be one. Okay, so I get a 2.011, which we're going to call approximately 2. It's certainly within a tenth. That's fine. And I get 6.04. That's within a tenth. We're going to call that 6. So if this is within a tenth, so if it's 0.1 or 0.9, it's okay to round. If it's not, you're going to have to multiply till whole. Since all of these are whole numbers, I now know my formula. I have Zn, N2, O6, which some of you may recognize as zinc nitrate. Okay, let's go on and do another one. I like to do these. I think these are kind of fun. And I have to, time to do at least one more before the end of this video. So I have a 200 gram sample. Uh, you know what? That's not going to be helpful this time, but it could have been. Uh, they tell me that I've got carbon and hydrogen and oxygen. Now, these values should sum up to be my 200 gram sample. In another problem, you might have been missing one of these values and you would have had to have obtained it from that total. In this case, it, it wasn't necessary. So I'm going to set up my little spreadsheet with carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. What's your phrase? Percent to mass. Ah, I don't need to. 
I was given mass, so I don't even need to do that. So let's just pop those mass values in. Now, the more work you show me, the more evidence you have to support your final claim of the answer. And if you get your answer wrong, the more work you show me, the more likely it is I can find ways to give you partial credit for demonstrating how wonderfully brilliant you are. All right, so I did percent to mass. It's time for mass to moles. Now, mass to moles use molar mass. So I, I'm going to round. Don't go any fewer than two decimal. You can go to more than two decimals, but no fewer than two decimal places. If you round, 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 oh my gosh, the mess you can make of some of these ratios. Okay. Notice I don't use the diatomic because it's carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen bonded in a big compound, not pure. So I have 7.888 moles of carbon, but that's pure moles in 94.7 grams, or true moles, I guess I could say. I have 20.84 moles, but that's true moles in 21.05, and I have 5.263 moles. So percent to mass wasn't needed. We just did mass to moles, percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by the smallest. Okay, now the smallest in this case is oxygen. So I'm going to divide not just oxygen, I want a ratio of everything relative to oxygen. So I have a 1, I have a 3.96, and I have 1.499. Do you notice I'm not rounding yet? Okay. Now, this is within a tenth. So I'm going to call that 4. This is really close to 1.5, isn't it? Right? That cannot be rounded. So to way, to way to get anything that's a half and get it to a whole, we multiply by 2. But remember, one for all and all for one. If you multiply one of these by 2, you have to multiply all of them by 2. And so when I do that, we are going to get 1.5 times 2 is 3, 4 times 2 is 8, and 1 point times 2 is 2. So now we know our empirical formula is C3H8O2. That's our empirical, not our actual formula. There could be bunches of molecules that have that. That's our empirical formula. All right, this is already a pretty long video, so until I see you again, this is signing off.